Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Steampunk Rally Fusion. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Machu Picchu, everybody, which is where we are going to be having our Steampunk Rally today. Although if I were to flip all these tiles over, we'd be racing on the surface of Mars. And the rules would actually change a fair bit. But let's just stay Earthbound today. Alright, so Steampunk Rally Fusion is a game where... Oops, I just put this wrong. There we go. That's the track. Where uh, some of the greatest inventors and uh, thinkers in history are going to get together and race to get across the finish line using a crazy uh, contraption vehicle that is constantly falling apart and we're constantly trying to rebuild during the race itself via card drafting. And I've got the game mostly set up here. There are a bunch of new features in Fusion. And uh, right off the bat, the first one is this idea of, I think, I think this is called the launch pad up here. And this is something that you can use if you're playing with first time Steampunk Rally players because it makes the race shorter. Uh, we only have one, two, three, four tiles instead of the normal six, but then we also have a few steps on the launch pad. And it makes it simpler at the beginning because at the beginning of the race, we don't use boost cards or we don't have a venting phase and we do not take simultaneous turns. So everybody can help everybody else walk through. So that's one new feature. Um, if you're an experienced steampunk rallier, you wouldn't necessarily want to use this unless you're just looking for a shorter game. But I think it is a nice touch, so I figured I'd show it. And all right, so here we are both at the start on the launch pad. Here's another new feature for the game. Uh, what's it? Uh, Pachacuti over here has a secret project. As part of setup, everybody gets two of these and picks one. And as you can see, you need to power it up. You need to get up to level one, level two, or level three, and then you can unleash it whenever you want to get bonuses. Mine is, it's a utility tunnel. So if I get to level one, it'll give me one free smooth motion, which I could use at a key moment when I was about to go over a bumpy road and take a lot of damage. If I can get to level two, two motion, smooth motion, and a blue die, or if I get up to level three, two blue dice in three motion. Now I gotta power it up over time and I do that but on each turn by spending some of my dice in a run or a straight. That's the interesting thing about the secret projects. They give you something else to do with your dice. In the original game uh, you only spent your dice by uh, as kind of a dice worker placement thing on your engine to try to get it to go and sometimes you just had to throw dice away because you didn't have a good use for them. But now you can pump your dice as an alternative into your secret mission and let it charge up over time, which is very, very cool. I really like these a lot. And now, strictly speaking, if you're playing with the intro variant with a launch pad, you're supposed to leave secret projects out because it's supposed to be a simpler game. But I'm kind of cheating, and I've got the shorter, easy game, and I've got the secret, so I can show you a little bit of everything. Right, anyway, so we're set up. We're at the starting line, uh, uh, Pachacuti and Hedy Lamar. And how does it work? Well, just like the original game, every round, first we will draft, then we will vent, although in the accelerated the launch pad version we don't vent until somebody gets off the launch pad and makes it onto the track. That's when venting will start happening. Then we race, we roll and spend the dice we got during the drafting phase, and then finally at the end of the round we take damage if things didn't go as well as we'd hoped. And then we do a bit of a little bit of cleanup at the end. So first we draft. And in the regular game, everybody draws from each of the four decks, a starting hand of cards, picks one, hands the rest to their opponents, and all that. But again, since we're playing the early one, we leave the boost cards out. And the boost cards are the kind of dirty tricks cards. A lot of them are, like magnetic claws, ways to mess with your opponents and slow them down or speed yourself up. Although, you know, a bunch of them are just going to help you survive, particularly um, in opportune moments. But there's just a ton of them uh, with, a t with a lot of variety, all kinds of different things they could do. And, uh, you know, like, uh, and unfortunately, I won't be showing these because at least not until we get off and then we start dr drafting four cards every round. Okay, so I've got my starting hand. What's here? I've got some rocket skis and a uh, thermal oxidizer and a fusion reactor. Now I'm going to keep one of these and give the other two to my opponent, Jen, or Hedy Lamar, as she's also known. And, mm, okay. Uh, these cards actually show two of the new ideas. One of them is the ability of getting to gear up a card. If I attach rocket skis to my jalopy, from that point on, I can use red dice with a value of at least four to get one movement down the track. 
but I could get two movement if I sacrifice three cogs, which are the main system we use for mitigating dice rolls. But if I want to, if I get cogs and I pump them on here, these rocket speeds will move twice as fast. And you'll see this idea on a lot of cards that, you know, they do something nice, but if you power them up with cogs, they become super powerful. And then you really want to protect them because you've invested in them so much. But if you know Steampunk Rally, often you'll find your parts just flying off your car left and right. So a uh, bigger investment means a bigger risk. All right. And then also there's this fusion reactor here where um, with a value die four that's either red, blue, or yellow, which is electricity, uh, water, steam power, or uh, you know heat, fire power, with any of those dice, you can either get one movement or you can get a fusion die. And that's, uh, well, you know, that's the name of the game, is fusion. These fusion dice, which uh, this is a prototype. I'm sure the real game won't come with just simple stickered ones. These dice are pretty much the same as normal, except they are valued four to nine instead of one to six. So they are significantly more powerful because in this game, bigger numbers is always better or almost always better. And um, so being able to use fusion dice can really bump you up if you roll a nine instead of a six. That's super powerful. But there is a... De and also, they're green, which means they could be used in place of any regular die. They're basically a wild die. Here's the problem, though. They run so hot that they, when you use them in the worker placement part to power your engine pieces, they will fuse to the engine and can never be removed. And so if you keep um, you know, you know, driving your engine into the ground by using all these fusion dice, if you can get them, you'll eventually make your engine completely freeze up and be useless because it gets fused to all these. Regular dice, when you use them to activate, eventually you can get rid of these dice and clear up the spots because you can cool your engine back down. But not so when you're running on fusion. So, all right, which of these do I want? Um... I would like to get some fusion dice right off the bat. And plus, this is nice because I can use any type of die on it. But my problem is this only has a bottom cover, so it has to be at the top of my vehicle. And if you look at Pacha Cutie's vehicle, his uh, space, which has its own special power, although, interestingly, his vehicle doesn't start with a special power. It can generate shields and fusion dice, but not until cogs have been pumped into it. So I need to get some cogs quick and power this up so I can use these powers. But it's also a top piece, so I, I mean, I can't get rid of myself to put another top piece on. So as much as I'd like this, it's not going to fit with the uh, vehicle I'm starting out with here. So I'll hand this one over to Jen. Some rocket skis would be pretty cool, but I've got a problem with that. Uh, rocket skis would have to go on the bottom, and I can only put something on the left or the right. So... As much as I'd like these, I don't think I'm going to use them. So I'll probably stick with this thermal oxidizer, which doesn't, which is a bit more normal. This one I can spend heat dice, although they have to be value six. So I got to roll sixes to run this thing. But if I do, I get shields, cogs, and extra dice. So this thing, this thermal oxidizer, can just run itself. But I have to roll sixes. But you know, when I when I power this up, and if I get a red and I don't roll a six, chances are I could still potentially pump that other red I got into my plasma drive because I only need fours over there. So I've got a shot. So these two will combine well together. So I think I'm going to keep this. Although I have to make a decision: Am I going to keep this as a new piece that I'm going to install, or am I going to what is the term? What is the term? Um, am I going to generate power or cogs? What that means is I can trash this card instead of installing it on my vehicle. And I will, if I trash it, I'll get two cogs or two red dice that I could use elsewhere. Um, I'm really kind of limited. I can't put a top or a bottom on. I think I will keep this. Um, this is going to go and be installed on my vehicle, I think. All righty. I'm not going to trash it for that. Anyway, so I've chosen this. While all this was happening, Jen, of course, had a starting hand of normally four, but right now only three cards because we haven't gotten off the launch pad yet. So she's got an electrolyzer. Oh, there's another new feature. Okay, the overcharging ability. And a Sterling engine. And a Vern thruster. Oh, Vern thruster and the electrolyzer have another new feature. Um, when they are activated... They can do a basic thing, uh, which is to say, oh, the electrolyzer will generate two electricity. You get two yellow dice, but you will take damage. And if you can't deal with that damage, you're 
your uh, jalopy will start falling apart. But if I want this electrolyzer, if it's installed and I activate it, um, instead of only doing its basic thing, I could trash it. I could destroy it and get a fusion die, plus still get the basic stuff. And the same thing is true for this Vern Thruster. Normally, you spend blue or red dice. They have to be value 6 to get 2 movement. But if I want, I could trash this um, to get the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? This movement plus gears. And the Sterling engine is a little bit more straightforward. So Jen's got to pick which of these she wants. And... Um, Hmm. So again, this Sterling engine is pretty handy just because uh, once she puts it here, now, right now, currently, Jen can't put like skis on the bottom of hers unless she had something like this so that she could then put stuff down below. So she's going to take that, or is she going to take one of the other pieces? I think, well, the interesting thing is if she takes this electrolyzer that allows her to get yellow dice, she can't use her yellow dice here. Um, because she needs red or blue dice. But if she gets these yellow dice, remember, she could potentially pump them into her secret project. So again, these secret projects give you a lot more flexibility. This is probably not something Jen would normally take. Um, but now she thinks she might. Interesting. Yeah, I think Electrolyzer. She wants a top hat for her vehicle. All right, so she hands the rest to me. The draft continues, and I see, oh, I can have thrusters, or I can have a Sterling engine. And I already know... Oh, oh, but I should have mentioned, um, if Jen wanted to, when she took this, she uh, could have trashed it instead to get some resources, but instead she just went on ahead and put it on the jalopy. And I should say, when you put stuff on, you are always free whenever you want to rearrange the cards. You are never stuck in a configuration. So, what do I want to do? I could put these Vern thrusters here on the back, and I i mean, I'd have a really souped up super vehicle. But remember, some of these cards I have to take for the purposes of trashing cards so that I can activate the separate sections. And I need red cards like crazy, so I'm going to keep the Sterling engine. I'm, and I'm not going to take it for installing on my vehicle. I hand this back to Jen. Instead, I wait. Everybody reveals at the same time what they're doing, but I'm ultimately going to reveal that I'm going to trash this to get two red dice. Because I'm going to need those red dice. All right, so that one is gone in the discard pile for this deck, which is where all the brown cards come from. Okay, so Jen, meanwhile, she had two to choose from, and she's going to give one back to me. And, like I said, Jen cannot install these rocket skis because she does not have a bottom coupler. She could trash them to get some yellow. She needs reds and blues as well. So, she might go on ahead... And uh, trash this, I think, to get some blues. So this fusion reactor, she uh, revealed this at the same time I revealed. She's trashing this. This goes into the gray discard pile. And she got herself a couple of blue dice so that she'll be able to run. And then she hands me this. And so we each got our final, and we have to decide, are we trashing these or are we installing these? I'll go on ahead and put these crazy rocket skis on. Look at this, this wacky jalopy I got. And now I've got a very upgradable vehicle because if I get some cogs, I can pump them in here to make this, this ski more powerful. And I've got red dice, and if I roll fours on these, I could run the skis or the plasma drive. And if I roll six, I can um, run the thermal oxidizer, which would be very, very nice at this point. And meanwhile, Jen has got her electrolyzer, which is going to generate some yellow for her. It's going to cause damage. But she herself, Hedy Lamar, will be able to repair that damage immediately. So these combo well together. And she got the Vern thrusters. I think Jen will have trashed this. Uh, let's see. So it went into the golden discard pile to get a couple of cogs. Uh, because the cogs give you control over the dice. So Jen's got some dice and some cogs. I've just got more pieces. And we have finished the draft. Now, in a normal game, there would be venting. And what that means is, if previously Jen had, say, put a uh, blue die on here, this blue space is uh, locked up. She cannot activate that space anymore to keep going. But if you want, you can vent. But for every cog you spend, you can reduce two pip values. So she could uh, spend a couple of cogs and turn this from a five into a one. If she had more cogs, she could get rid of it completely. Or you can spread those two pips across multiple dice if you want. Now, we don't have anything locked up, and even still, in the intro version, there is no venting until somebody gets off the launch pad and gets out onto the track. So, we're skipping the venting, and now it is race time. Roll your dice, activate your machine sparts, spend cogs to re-roll, or um, add one pip to the dice so Jen can manipulate her dice. I can't. I don't have any cogs. And it doesn't say this because it's from the original game. You can also spend your dice on your secret project. So... 
Let's see what I got. Um, show me what you got. Alrighty. I've got a five and a five, which means I cannot run my thermal oxidizer, but I could run my plasma drive and my rocket skis and just start moving. This is a race after all. Or if I wanted, I could put one of them onto my secret project because I can put as many dice of any color I want into my secret project, but they have to be in a straight, in a standing. It could be one, two, three, or five, six, seven, or seven, eight, nine. Because remember, if you have fusion dice, they can go to your secret project as well. Um, so I could put one of these and that would be a straight of one, which means I would get one step closer or I don't have to because I could run the rocket skis. And I think this is what I'm going to do. I am going to run the rocket skis and the plasma drive. And I'm just going to race like crazy. And now normally the racing phase, everybody operates simultaneously. Um, but uh, since I'm doing the run through and also since we turn off simultaneous turns on the launch pad, everybody takes turns. So everybody can watch what everybody else is doing if you're new to the game. So I'm going to run this. I needed at least a four. I had a five. Now interestingly, if I had a fusion and I had at least an eight, that would count twice. And I would get to activate this twice. But um, I just have a five. So... I can either move one space or get a couple of fusion dice. Fusion's in the name of the game, folks. So during the race phase, if you get any more dice, you roll them immediately, and these are additional dice you can use. I've got a seven and an eight. Boom! Now I've got that eight I was talking about. Although, remember, these are any color I want them to be. Um, so, man. Right, so I think... I uh, use this to get two fusion dice. I haven't used this one yet. I'll go on ahead and use this eight to fire up the thermal. No, I'll use this seven to fire up the thermal because it just has to be over a six. Doesn't do me any good to go. So I'll, I'll use my seven. Although instead, I could use this seven and this eight and move up two spaces, but uh uh. I'm going to thermally oxidize, which gives me one defense, one cog. And now I could use these cogs to change values. I could turn this five into a six so I could run the thermal oxidizer again and get more dice. Mm. But anyway, so I have a shield uh, to prevent me from damage in case I take any damage. Although currently I'm not. I've got a cog, which is good. And I get another red die. Boom. And it's a one. That is not helping me very much at all. Um, this one, I might, in the regular game, you tell, oh, this one, I can't use it any place. Uh, you throw it away. But this one, I could always put it into my secret project. And I could then put a two and a three and a four. I don't have to decide what I'm doing with that yet. Because um, I've still got two more dice to place. Let's go on ahead. Let's use this eight over here. And I'll use it on one of the blue spaces. And that means I activate the plasma drive twice. And it's, uh, oh, 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 oh. Hold on a second. No, I don't. No, I don't. Because I need to look with better eyes, folks, um, because um, my plasma drive, I totally forgot. This is one of those things that if I want to get those plasma dice, which I just got, then um, when I activate this, if I have to trash this card, which means I get the movement and. So I did actually move one space. Hooray, I'm on the track. And this piece got blowed up real good. But don't worry about me, because you can always rearrange your stuff and boom! Like a transformer, I changed into this tall, crazy ski thing. I've lost my plasma drive to get those dice, and um, then I rolled the dice. All right, and when I lost that piece, I also lost the five I'd rolled. So my 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 vehicle is falling apart in front of me. But now I've got the dice, and I can keep going. So I'm probably still gonna right. So I put this seven over here. Uh, so I got the shielding, the cog, and the red. I rolled the red. It's probably gonna go into a secret. I've got another fusion. Um, and here's the interesting thing. I could put this over here and trigger all these big things, or I could put it over here and trigger this one uh, twice because, um, eight divided is two. It could be four steps if I put the cogs in, but I don't have the cogs because I didn't sacrifice. I didn't have any cogs up there. Let's go on ahead and do this. And so I get, um, eight divided by four is two. I get two more movement. One, two. I am almost off the launch pad. Alrighty. And I've still got this five which cannot work over here. I can't combine it with this one as a straight. So I will put it on the skis and I activate the skis one more time. And here's the interesting thing, folks. Uh, you will notice I am now going to move into this space. It's the uh, getting off point. And because I hit this space, I'm going to take one damage. So I have to mark the damage I take uh, like this. But I forgot. When I gave myself one shield, I was first. This is my damage meter. First of all, when I got the one shield, I marked it here. Folks, this is why you always watch the thing on subtitles turn on in case I forget something. Paulo noted it. So my shields were up. 
Then I moved here, and I took the damage. My shields are back down. I'm at zero, which means I'm not going to lose any more pieces of my vehicle. Alrighty. Um, but now that somebody has gotten here, we are done with the intro. And from now on, there will be vent phases. We will have boost cards and we can take turns simultaneously because somebody's made it there. Oh, if I only made it one more step, I could have shown you what happens when we enter Machu Picchu because these pink spaces are special. So that's very interesting. But we'll come back to that. And now finally, I had one more die. I'd like to have more so I can push, but I'm just going to push the secret project up once. I'm getting closer and closer to that. Okay. And so, boom, that was my race turn. I am done. It is Jen's turn. That's right. So she had a couple of dice. Let's go on ahead and roll these bones. Boop. All right. And she also got two fives. What are the chances of that? That's crazy. But there is something else we can do on our turn, um, which is we can have a bright idea. If we have any cards with this idea icon on them, and as you can see, Jen started with one and she gave herself one more. If we activate the idea, we activate those. So Jen does this. It gives her another cog. And it puts her shields up. And this one activates, which gives her two yellow dice, which she rolls upon taking them. And another five! That's crazy! And she takes damage from running the electrolyzer, but that's okay, because it's offset by that. And now, Jen cannot trigger any more of these ideas. Now, I could have done this as well on my turn, but my problem was, my ideas don't do anything until I charge them up with cogs. So I need to get some cogs on this thing because then I'm generating shields or I'm generating fusion dice without blowing anything up. So I really need to start dumping cards to um, get those cogs so I can power up my, um, my vehicle. But anyway, back over here to Jen. So she's activated those. And now she's got blue dice that can run her plasma drive and she's got yellow dice that can do nothing um, because uh, she can't run anything. But she, and she knew that, but remember, she's planning on pumping those yellow dice into her secret project. So if she spends two cogs to um, increase or decrease, she can turn this into a three and she can turn this five into a four. And that's a straight that gives her one, two steps on her secret project. So she's pretty happy with that. And then she's got two fives. She's going to put the pedal to the metal and activate her plasma drive twice, which could let her move twice. Or um, Jen's got that same situation as me. She could trash her plasma drive and get a, or, or get a couple of plasma dice, but then Jen would have a problem. If she trashed this, these two pieces can't snap together. And you know, I was able to recover. I was able to reconfigure myself on the fly. Jen does not want to destroy her plasma drive. So she's just going to lock both of these in here. Um, they're bigger than a uh, four, so she gets to move forward two spaces. One, two. And that was that. And her project moves up, and she's still got one cog, and she is done. Now, if anybody had taken more damage than they had shield, so they were down, and the next step is we take damage, which is for every damage we have, we have to lose one piece of our vehicle. Fortunately, nobody took any damage, so that's good news. And finally, at the end of the round, we... Um, well, this was in the original game. There was a play token that determined um, the... Uh, Oh, uh, uh, the, oh, the uh, the player turn order. Now it is resolved by this event deck, which I haven't quite hit an event deck, but I'll show you one shortly. And um, we reset our light bulb. So Jen gets her light bulb back on and we start the new round. And now because I made it this far, we are drafting four cards from now on. We can play simultaneously. We can spend cogs to vent. And by the way, I forgot to mention, when we spend cogs, we can either use them to increase or decrease the value of dice, or we can spend them to completely re-roll a die if we're a million miles away and we want to take a chance. So what have I got now? Well, let's look at this. I could have Vibronic Couplings, or I could trash this to get some cogs or some dice. Uh, draw two silver border cards and draft one of them, discard the other. Then, if at least half of my um, non cockmic machine parts are silver, get four movement. So, unfortunately, I've got my two, I've got a bronze and I've got a golden one. I have no silver. So, this is not a particularly good one for me. Jen does have silver. So, this one could be good for her. Maybe I should take this, keep it for myself. Now, with the boost cards, there's two things you can do. When I reveal it, I could trash it and get some resources. I take cogs so I could power up myself up. Or I can stash these. I take them and they just stay in my hand. And at a later time, when the timing is right, I can play these. All right, but I didn't even look at what else I had here. I have got also a uh, turbo moleculizer, which, oh man, if I get four cogs on that, it starts generating shields and fusion dice. Although, again, you got to roll sixes. Uh, all right, arc lamps and 
Is this another one? Another thermal oxidizer, which I've used to good effect so far. Um, interesting, interesting. And by the way, folks, I have a problem I've got to deal with uh, as I move forward. My skis are full. I can't put any more dice on here. Remember, during the venting phase, I can spend every cog I spend, I can reduce the die by two, so I can eventually clear this one out. But the problem is, this fusion die and this one are fused to these cards, and I can never remove them. So pretty soon, this rocket ski is going to be kind of useless to me. So I don't know if I'm going to be trying to pump resources into it to make it more powerful. Um, but you know, we'll have to see as things evolve. But anyway, which of these cards? I think I am going to take this Vibrana Coupler because I think it would be good for Jen because I could see she's already starting on silver. I'm going to take this. And when we eventually reveal, I reveal, I'm getting some cogs, please. And that just goes into the discard for boosts. And I get two more cogs, which means I've got three. I could have my ship be auto... Um, protected from damage every time I activate it, but I want to get to five so I can be getting those free fusion dice. All right, so I kept one for myself. The rest go to Jen. Meanwhile, simultaneously, Jen was looking at another Vibronic Coupler. Let's try and show you something else, folks. You don't want to see duplicates of the same stuff. Jen could give herself some inspiration, meaning she could use her light bulb twice. Wow! Okay, or trash it. Then let's see what else she's got. She's got another fusion reactor. She's got... A uh, gurney carriage, turn fives of blue. And so the, a big part of this game is engine building. If you have a card that generates blues, then you want to have this because the cards, that, the blues that get generated can get pumped into this and give you more cogs and movement, as an example. And let's see. Oh, the auto gyro. This is, this is another uh, cool idea. Um, the number, you can put uh, heat or water to get smooth movement, which means you don't take damage when you move over rocky terrain like I did before. But to use this, the number here has to be the number of parts in your invention. So there are several cards like this that encourage you to stay small. Normally in Steampunk Rally, cars tend to get really big because they give you a lot of options and they're also a defense mechanism. If you lose a few pieces, no big deal. Cards like this encourage you to stay small and tight uh, because I mean, if, if this were one of three pieces, then the number is three. And if you put a six on here, you get to activate it twice. Or if you put a nine on here with a fusion die, you could activate it three times. All right, so which one of these does Jen want? I think Jen wants some Inspirado. And she reveals that she is keeping this for a later date. All righty. And the rest come to me. And let's see here. So which of these do I want? All right. I'm gonna, all right I've still got my Thermal Oxidizer, which means I'm going to need some red dice if I want to keep moving. So I could just go ahead and trash this Gurney Carriage. I think I'm going to keep this specifically to trash it, specifically to get the red dice. Because I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to get red dice, and now I'm standing still. So I'm going to reveal simultaneously at the same time. I'm trashing this to get red dice, which I'm going to be rolling later on. And then I hand the rest to Jen. Meanwhile, Jen looks at what I handed to her, and she would really like something to use these yellows that she's getting. Like, say, these arc lamps. Yeah, Jen is keeping this, and she reveals it, and she installs it right there. So the yellows her electrolyzer generates will power her arc lamp, um, which allows her... This is beautiful. When she runs this, it gives her a shield, and it removes a blue die. So instead of having to vent these, um, the arc lamps will clear these out so that she can put more bl uh, blues right back in. So she's starting to make a nice, nice engine there. So she kept that for herself. She's giving me these two. I could get myself some more red dice, but I want more cogs. Let's see. Um, so if I'm going to trash one of these for cogs so I can hit the five spot, which of these am I going to give back to Jen? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't think I want her to have the uh, Turbo Molecular. I'm going to trash that. I give this one. This is Jen's last card. I trashed it. I got more cogs. That's five cogs, baby. Boom! These can never be removed, but now my vehicle is charged up. I got fusion dice for the rest of the game. Although remember, once I use the fusion dice, they fuse, and then I could really break my vehicle down. All right, so that was it for me. And um, right, so Jen ended up having these cards. And so the last card, was she going to install a thermal oxidizer? No, I think she trashed this one to get... To get... Um, to get some red dice that she'll be able to run her plasma drive with. Okay, there we go. So we've done all that, and now, because one of us made it off the launch pad, we could vent. We could spend cogs to reduce pips. I've got one, but I've already locked all my cogs in play. Jen could, but she's got another way to get rid of these, so we're skipping that, and now we race. 
I roll. I got a five and a six. What is with all these fives? Jen got a five and a two. And everybody can play this simultaneously. All righty. And some interesting stuff is going to happen. First of all, folks, I'm going to have a bright idea, which is going to give me one fusion die, which rolls a five. Ugh. That's the equivalent of rolling a two. That's not good. All righty. Shoot, 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 shoot the boot. So what do I want to do? Um, I think I'm a little disappointed by that. I'm just going to take this five and the six and bump up my secret project. Because the nice thing about using fusion dice on secret projects is they don't permanently glom up your engine. So I'm doing that and I'm going to run my... Oh, this is a... Oh, no! This is a five. I can't use it. I need at least a six. Okay, then. Hold on a second. I did not move this up by two. Instead, I will use this six to run my thermal oxidizer, which means I... Shields up, Captain. And I get another cog. And I get another red die. Wah! And it's a two which does me no good at all. Oh my gosh. See, I was thinking I was going to use this cog to turn this 5 into a 6, and the 5 and the 6, I'd still move up. But what, I don't want to throw this 2 away, because if I can't use it... So now I'm thinking I should throw this 2 over here. Mer. All right. Anyway. And keep this cog for later, because I might want to start powering up, because I'm going to start taking some damage here. All right, so I got the extra die. I can't... Although I could move again... No, that's the problem. My thermal oxidizer doesn't let me move. That was kind of an oversight. As I blew up my main plasma drive and my skis are gummed up, I can't do anything. Oh, shoot. Well, that's... Although, I mean, it's okay to stand still for a day or two in a rally because, hey, I could just put this... I could pump this up to a six. Uh, use it again. Use it again, which gives me another cog. Um, and another shield, and these shields don't go away. They'll protect me later. And another red die. It's a three. And a two and a three. These go very well together. So I will go, and I want this cog to come over here, but instead I'm going to use this cog to turn this five, suddenly I'm happy about it, into a four, and I get to go boom, boom, boom. And so if I wanted right now, I have got the first level, I could activate this and get one free movement without danger of damage. Well, I've got my shields up, and I think I'd rather pill this up a little bit more. So that was it. I stood still. I didn't actually make it to the uh, to the uh, the power pad like I wanted to show you. Let's see if Jen can pull that off because I do want to show this to you. It's another very big cool feature. But anyway, that was it for me. And now I've only got one. I really need to start tossing this stuff. I don't mind taking some damage, or I, but I can always just jettison these to make room for other stuff too if I need to. All right. Yikes. Jen, meanwhile, she rolls. Uh, she gets a 1 and a 2. That's not great. She has a big idea that gives her another cog and another shield. And uh, gives her two yellow dice. A 4 and a 1. And she takes one damage from her electrolyzer. And she will go on ahead now. And this is a real bummer. Um, well, Jen will go on ahead. And she has to have at least... Oh my gosh! She needs fives to pump this in over here to clear these blues out. And get more shields. What did she keep for herself? Her inspiration? It might be time to have some... No, no, no. <sighs> See, she can have inspiration right now to unflip, get more cogs, more shields, and more... But she loses the shield because of that. You know what? If she wanted to, when she activated this, I think Jen, she's going to go big. She's going to trash this to get what she already got. Plus, when she activated it, she trashed it and got herself a fusion die. Boom! Which gave her a 7. Okay. Because Jen wants to move it, move it. Jen is going to turn this 7 into an 8. So she can activate the plasma drive. That gives her 2 movement. 1, 2. Whereupon she takes 1 point of damage. Boom. Uh-oh. Which means she's going to lose something else if she doesn't get some shields somewhere. Um, and she can't get any more ideas to get the shields up. But she will use this other cog to turn this 4 into a 5. To activate the arc lamps. If I can find... There we go. To activate the arc lamps. Which lets her clear out one of the blue dice. So now she can start activating again. And gives her a shield that she needs. Phew! For when she hit that mountain. And, um... Right. She's done. Oh, no. No, she's not done. Because... She's still got a 1 and a 2. Man, she well, she'll put these over here and go up 1, 2. And sadly, this 1, 
She can't use it for anything, so it's gone. Yeah. So that was that for her. And Jen also, we neither of us made it off the, the what's it? Although Jen still got this at the end of the round. All right. You know what, folks? I'm going to say, let's just say by hook or by crook, I actually did get one movement because I, I wanted to show one more thing. When, if I had, in fact, moved last turn, the first player to hit one of these pink areas, you draw the top event card and we find out there's a Stargate there. Although it could have been Cosmic Knowledge or um, a pressure plate, a trap. Could be all kinds of things. You never know exactly. So this was a Stargate. When I moved here, I would have to immediately lose one part of my vehicle, uh, get sucked into the Stargate, or I could move three and I would double any damage I take. So I, I, I can either lose a piece that gets sucked in, or I can go into the Stargate, move three spaces, but I'll take double damage. And if I end on another artifact, resolve it immediately. And here's the thing. This stays here. This artifact is now associated. If any other player ends their turn in this, they will have to deal with the Stargate. And if they don't want to, they want to make sure they move through there. It's only at the end of the turn that this will resolve. So, um, somehow I got an extra movement. I hit a Stargate. Jen didn't quite make the Stargate, so she can decide later if she wants to zip past it or leverage it somehow. And I've got a decision to make. I would like to get three movement. But, um, if I move in this direction... I have to either take two damage, although now it's four damage, ouch, or I'd have to give up yellow dice. I don't have any yellow dice in the pool, so I'd have to go four, and I'd go one, two, three, and I'd take two more. I'd take six damage. Aye! Which would pretty much make my entire ship blow up. And when your entire ship blows up, uh, you end up falling back to, uh, back to wherever your other opponents are. I could go this way and go one, two, three to come out the other side, but I take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Times two, I take 16 damage. Um, I do have two shields, but they will not protect me. So, this Stargate, turned out it was a trap. I can't afford to lose... Wait, wait, what was it? It was four, six. I, I could lose six, two, four. No, I'd still lose everything. So, I couldn't afford to use the Stargate. I don't have enough shields yet. So, I'm going to have to immediately lose one piece. But you know what? I don't mind. Because this... Skis, they had reached the end of the usefulness anyway. So this, my skis, which were all gummed up, got sucked into the Stargate, and I lost them. But that's okay. I'll rebuild tomorrow on the next day of the rally, and I'm one step ahead if I had somehow found a way to do that. And Jen knows this is where this is, and she will have to decide in the future, is she going to try and skip past it? Is she, can she get three movement or two movement and not end her turn there? And as you can see, we're going to find out another item which might be pressure plates, which can mess, will allow you to mess with other players, or cosmic knowledge, get some electricity. There's a bunch of different ones. Unknown alloys, cryo chambers, etc., etc. And um, once somebody hits it, everybody else knows what it is as they move closer and closer towards it. And uh, yeah, that's the other cool thing. Now, if we were playing on the Martian side, instead of finding these artifacts, we would find very cool upgrades that we would get when we hit certain spots. And also, we would have um, you, know, you know other special case things we have to deal with trying to work our way through the Martian landscape instead of the Machu Picchu landscape. But folks, you know what? I think with that little bit of a cheat, I've probably given you a pretty good idea of the overall flow of Steampunk Rally Fusion. And before I get to final thoughts, please remember, folks, this was a paid preview, so you should take my subjective opinions with a grain of salt. And with that out of the way, what were my opinions? Oh, we love it. We love it. Uh, you can go back and watch my original run-through for Steampunk Rally. We love that one, too, and we love this just as much. More cool new features, more cards, more variety, more engine building, cool new special dice unlike anything we've seen before. Um, love it all. And uh, it's great how this integrates with the original game. And I gotta say, it was just so nice to revisit this game because we hadn't played it, um, really, since I played the original prototype years ago. But I was immediately... I talked about this originally, how this reminds me so much of the old Saturday morning cartoon show, Wacky Races. It has just that wacky vibe of these jalopies you make that just make no sense, and you're just holding them together with duct tape and um, bailing wire, hoping that they can make it over these bumpy roads, Because, but they will keep falling apart. Or you make these gigantic, huge, epic vehicles that can take anything. But man, it took a long time to build that villain. Can you catch up uh, with the players who went lean and fast and were halfway across the the uh, course before you even started. So the combination of card drafting, which is done wonderfully, engine building, uh, dice worker placement, and racing, 
it worked wonderfully before, it works wonderfully now. So, what about these new features? Well, I gotta say, I love the Fusion Dice, yeah, which the whole thing is named after. It's so simple. They're just wild dice, and they're fours to nines. And like everything in Steampunk Rally, there is always a trade-off. The better a thing is, the harder it is to deal with. Because when you fuse a, a Fusion Die to one of your engine pieces, it will never come off. And as you use more of them, it gets to the point where that engine piece is totally useless. But hey, that might be part of your plans, because you plan on jettisoning that piece when you go over the next rocky road. So, that's really, really... Really neat. Um, and these secret projects, oh my gosh. I would have a hard time going back and playing the original game because these are such a lifesaver. When you roll and you think you've got all and the dice just won't be good to you, you've always got a secret project you can be working on and that's great. My only complaint about these is once you've used it, it's gone. It really kind of felt to me like, hey, once I use a secret project, I should get to draw two more and pick another one because I don't want to stop using these right up until the end of the game. These are useful. And, um, you know, I mean, but I, I guess it encourages you to build, 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 build to get all the way up to the top so you can get the super boost. But even then, if you're near the end and you've done that, you still might want another one to get a little baby boost, maybe. Um, because there's always going to be turns where no matter how well you've engine built, the dice are just cruel. Cruel! And that's, I love Secret Project for that. They so enhance the overall quality of the game. Um, I, I don't think Jen and I need it, but, you know, having a nice intro version of the game for everybody to start off in a, a slightly simpler uh, situation, I think that's great. To make it a little bit more gateway friendly, that's cool, 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 cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, like the, the, the new card features. Being able to pump your engines up with cogs, that's a big deal. Because in the in the original game, and in this game, you are going to find pieces flying off left, right, and center. And that's usually, if you planned well, okay, you don't mind. Because, hey, that was all part of my plan. I knew I was going to jettison that rather than try and clear, unclog it. But now, if I've invested resources to upgrade these cards, I don't want to lose them. I have more of a sense of connection. There's more risk now. Um, which which is which is great. I love the cards that really uh, encourage building lean because that's kind of how I like to play anyway. Um, the uh, you know the, the being able to oh just trash a piece to get a one time bonus, uh, but hopefully after you trash your car, hopefully you can put it back together. All that stuff is great. And there's one other really big thing, which are these artifacts, which I showed. And on the Martian landscape, there are alien tripods. If you think of the you know the tripods from. H.G. Wells, War, War of the Worlds. You know, those big tripods, um, uh, they, those get revealed. And the main difference is um, every one of these things has a different artifact in it. Whereas when somebody moves on to a, the equivalent of that on the Martian side, there was one tripod card that affects all of those spaces. So um, either way, though, the fundamental thing about these is these I like in theory, but they're le my least favorite part of the new game. And I'll tell you why. If you're a player like me who likes to be out in front and just go for speed and close to the metal and you're on a razor's edge, you're going to be the one who is always revealing these. And these can be very swingy. They can be a real godsend, giving you extra dice or uh, you know bonuses, or they can really hamper you and you have no idea what's going to be. And there's really no way to prepare. You just got to hope, okay, when I hit it and I flip this... I hope it's okay. Everybody who's behind you, they now know what's on the track and they can get to plan. Um, and I was just like, ugh. It's okay, but, you know, I personally would have preferred something like, hey, you know, you always know what the next one is going to be and you're more racing to deal with it or skip over it. I'm not, I just don't know exactly. Or maybe, you know what, if I'm going to move into one of these and I'm worried it's going to really ruin me, I won't use my light bulb this eye. I won't use my inspiration token because if I save it, I can flip it to prevent the effect of these. Just because a hallmark of Steampunk Rally has always been there's a lot of luck with the dice rolls, but there's a lot of ways to mitigate that luck. This adds more luck to the game and there's really not much of a way to mitigate it other than just always go really slow and let other people take the risk. Um, and you know what? And if they take the risk and it turns out to be a reward you will get the reward when you get there as well. But if it's a risk, you'll be able to skip it later on. Um, so either go slow or, well, that's it. Um, and yeah, in a game that's already encouraging you to go as fast as possible, something that encourages you to go slow seems contrary to the entire idea of a rally race. 
And I wish they'd kind of resolve those in a slightly different way. Pers I mean, I'm sure a lot of people love it. You know, just uh, the crazy party atmosphere of, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. It was so amazing. Or, oh, it was just ruined me and I've just lost three parts of my ship and I can, I'm, I'm really going to have to recover now. You know, uh, yeah. So, I think... Personally, I would have liked to have implemented them in a different... I love the idea of them, though. I think there are cool ways. It's just, in a game all about luck mitigation, give me a way to mitigate the luck in there. Um, you know, a one-time opportunity to skip them, and then it's gone in it, Something. But you know what? Actually, there is one way you can deal with it. If you can build up enough speed on a given turn, enough to be able to skip an entire zone... It won't affect you, because it's only if you end your turn in them that you have to flip the card and find out whatever might await you. So, that is one way, to be fair, to mitigate that luck. But, you know what, in this game, you don't always have that need for speed. So, you know, just overall, something to bear in mind, just something I wanted to mention. Anyway, though, um, but otherwise, I love everything that fusion brings especially the fusion dice themselves and uh, oh and those secret projects oh they it, it, it would be impossible to go back and play this game without them now and that's it folks those are my final thoughts for the preview of uh steampunk rally fusion uh, which is on kickstarter right now as i said right up front and uh that's it folks thank you very much for watching have a very nice day talk to you later so long uh, bye bye